Good morning again. Good morning. It is still Easter for us. Christ is risen, risen indeed. The sermon theme for this morning is I send you. I send you. I remember going away to college. It was a two hour drive away from home. I remember packing up the truck. I remember the whole summer before going away to college. I remember new sheets and pots and pans, a mini refrigerator, lots of stuff packed on a truck to start me off on a journey. I remember the drive to college. It seemed like it would never, ever end. I couldn't get to the campus soon enough. I remember all the excitement and nerves being housed in my body. I remember my mom helping to set me up and she was really taking her time. I was like, is she ever gonna leave? (laughs) It was my first time away. I've relived that experience lots and lots of times, years after years, through undergraduate and then graduate school, and now through family and friends whose kids are going off to college. We have kicked going to college up a notch because now there are trunk parties and college registries. After years of living at home, many send their youth away because it is time. It is time for them to fly for themselves. It is time for them to go out there and take on the world. And though I have seen parents stricken with sadness, including my cousin, who was just so sad when her son went off to school, This love attachment does not prevent parents from operating in the best interests of their kids by sending them off, sending them off to pursue dreams, to pursue education, to pursue a better life. A dear colleague of mine participates in a rite of passage with his church for black male boys. This program was pretty popular in its heyday. When the male reaches a certain age, they go through rituals. This ritual recognizes that they are becoming young men. In one ritual, the male is asked, do you have a good life? They are then told, as you get older, you may find that life gets harder for you. The world is not always a kind place, especially for men like us. They are invited to take a look at the men in the room that have been on this journey with them. They are invited to reflect on this community as the ones that will support them through life. Then one male is invited to get on the back of a father or a father-like figure. The father is then asked to begin doing push-ups. The male on the back, they are told this back is meant to carry you through life. This back will push you to be your best. This back will lift you up to new heights. Even though you are being sent into the world, you do, not, you do not go alone. The boy boys are prepared to know where they come from, to know what they are made of, and to know that they have support in this world. Today we enter the biblical text. It is still Easter. Here Jesus has made his appearance to the disciples. Last week Mary saw him, but This week in the Gospel of John, the disciples see Jesus. And while they are holed up at Motel 6, locked in, he declares, I send you. I send you into this broken world. I send you to be witnesses. I send you to declare good news to those who haven't heard good news in a while. I send you to fight for those who are weak and powerless and have almost given up. I send you to share your resources with others. I send you to shine your light. You've been around me long enough to know my values. You've been around me long enough to know what I stand for. So it's now time for you to go. I send you. Ecclesiastes 3 reminds us that there is a time for everything, a time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, and a time to pluck up what is planted, a time to break down, and a time to build up a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to throw away stones and a time to gather stones, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, 
a time to seek and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak, a time to love, a time for war and a time for peace. There's a time to gather and there's a time to be engaged in life with other people. There's a time to be sent out into the world. And that time is now Easter time. In the life of a Christian, we are first nourished, we learn, but it is part of our spiritual journey, like the disciples, to be sent into the world. For some, that's been standing on corners and passing out leaflets and telling people they're going to hell if they don't get their life right. But for us, maybe that looks differently. Maybe for us, it's making sandwiches, sending money to war-torn countries, opening up our homes and our hearts, encouraging someone when they lose a loved one, taking someone out to lunch, sending a card in the mail, just listening on the phone. The Spirit leads us, says Jesus, and the Spirit will lead you, he says to the disciples, and the Spirit will lead us. Being sent by God is powerful stuff. This winter, uh, I listened to the book Mexican Gothic. It starts out with the patriarch getting a troubling letter, letter from his niece. What does he do? He sends his daughter to try and figure out what is going on. The plot thickens. Here is daddy, and he says, I need you, my child, to go on my behalf to help me understand the situation better, to find out what's going on with your cousin. I am sending you. As Jesus says, look, I am done down here, and I need all of you to go into the world. Being sent can be scary. The world can be scary. Being vulnerable can be scary. Rejection can be scary. I was listening to some kids when during COVID, remember when we had the protests and some looting and stores were boarded up? And I was listening to some of our young people talk about how scared they were. I was watching this documentary this week on the Mennonites who had moved to South America to avoid any contact with the world, to some remote region in South America. I turn on the news and learn two Russian families of gas executives were killed. Not just the gas executives, but their whole families. I got a text this morning as I woke up from a friend. Her mom's been diagnosed with pancreatic cancer and is at the University of Chicago. And if I ask all of you all to add, we could be in here for a while, amen? There is real stuff happening over there, over here, and right in our homes and in our lives. Going out these days can be scary. We watch in the news that some people went out and they thought they were coming back home and some crazy freak stuff happened. COVID is down and up. Some of us are just trying to get home. Octavia Butler, in her futuristic book, Parable of the Sower, talks about a world even scarier than the one we live in. Or just watch Netflix, Don't Look Up, Happy Earth Day or any, move, any movie that documents where we are environmentally. All of those movies about the world not being able to really sustain us and our habits. Scary stuff. The disciples were locked in, and in many ways we too have become imprisoned by fear and worry. And Jesus says, I send you. Just as God sent me, I am sending you. Easter is ascending time. You know what to do. Every Sunday at the end of service, we do what? A benediction. Now, you may think the benediction is a closing prayer, but it's more than that. And you may think, oh, it's a time of blessing, but it's more than that as well. In the benediction, we send you back into the world. We hope that you have benefited from gathering with this community. We hope you've benefited from sharing the peace and singing hymns and songs and listening to the word and your participation in sharing your resources and listening to one another. But after all of that, we send believers back into the world to live your life of faith. 
We encourage you as followers to be compassionate and open to others. But it's time to go. It's that time. There's a time for everything under the sun, and it's time for us to be sent in the world. The time has come for us to be in the world. Today I began with my own sending off moons ago. In many ways I was ready, but in many ways I was not. Are we ever, are we ever ready? Are we ever really ready? I hit a lot of bumps, but home and values were already planted. It hasn't been easy, but it's been a life well lived. And I concur with Langston Hughes that life for me ain't been no crystal stair. It's had tax in it. Come on, somebody. Splinters, boards torn up, and places with no carpet on the floor at all. But all the time, we's have been a-climbing and reaching landings and turning corners and sometimes going in the dark. Somebody ought to say amen. Where there ain't been no light, but we still climb. No, life has not been a crystal stair. Life is full of laughter and tears, full of joy rides and despair, full of you never know what you're going to get next. But it's what we have, and it's what we've been invited to by God, sent to be the hands and the feet and the heart and the love of God in this world. We have been sent to bear witness to mercy and grace. We have been sent however awkward and vulnerable we are to share with others. And sometimes it's scary. But Jesus proclaims in another word in Matthew, even as he sends the disciples, lo, I am with you always. Come on, finish it with me. Even unto the end. Kids do not get to stay at home forever. I keep reminding mine every day. Disciples do not stay with teachers forever. And we people, it is time for us to go with the full knowledge that it's scary. It's really scary. But that Jesus is always with us, even until the end. And yes, Jesus not only sends the disciples, but Jesus, Jesus sends us. Amen.